Hello and welcome to another Budget and Leggett video. Today we are going to be doing gearbox seals. Now, I've done a previous video on a service of this Fiesta. So it's a 2010 Fiesta, a uh, diesel one, 1 1.4 turbo I believe. I can't remember off the top of my head. And um, in the video, in the service video, we said that there was a leak. Now I topped the gearbox up just for the last couple of weeks and now we're actually coming to redo the seal. Now it looks very simple and it is, but to get to it, it's a nightmare. There's a lot of stripping. And basically where it goes, oh, all the covers on. What I'm gonna have to do is the engine covers on. I'm gonna take off the wheel, I'm gonna take off the engine cover. We'll turn the camera back on once I've done that. There's no point in me showing you that. Just a couple of bolts. There'll be a couple of torques under here for the engine cover. Once we've got that off, we'll show you exactly where this goes. Right, there's a couple of important things you need to remember once you're doing a kind of a job like this. This is our suspension here. Now, again, there's a couple of ways of doing it. You can either disconnect it from the shock and let the um, hub go that way, or you can disconnect it from the bottom ball joint. Now, normally it is kind of easier to disconnect it from the ball joint. Um, and sometimes what you might have to do is disconnect the track rod end but you kind of maybe have to do that with, with both of them. If you disconnect the bottom board and the track rod end, you'll definitely get it out. But if you disconnect the shock and that, you'll definitely get it out too. Now, this, this one with the shock, it's got two bolts going through, very easy to disconnect. The ones where the shock comes through the hub and there's only one bolt, they're a nightmare. So what I suggest if you get one of them is definitely disconnect the bottom wishbone. Now, it is vitally important, once you, disc once you start messing with anything on your suspension, you have to get it tracked. Even if the car feels fine, believe me, get it tracked afterwards because you will, you will start destroying your tyres. But basically what we need to do is get this drive shaft out. Now, the drive shaft is obviously connected by a big bolt at the hub. This one also has a bearing in the middle of it, so we have to disconnect that, and then it goes inside the gearbox, which is here. And there's a little seal which is right in there. So that's what we've got to basically replace. But to, before we do that, we have to get the drive shaft out. Now, before we do that, what we need to do is get out the old oil. Now, this is just a little cover. There's just a few clips. You'll see the filler hole here. That's to fill the oil. And this is the drain. So this is what drains oil. So at first, we need to drain oil. Now, this is a bit of a bad system because the oil hits here and kind of just blows up everywhere. So what I'm going to do is because we have to take the oil out anyway, replace the oil with new oil. But again, you need to make sure what car you have to what oil you need. This is a newer car. We're putting 7590 semi-synthetic oil in this. So you need to know, some, some cars even take engine oil in the gearbox. A couple of Nissans come to mind. But you just need to know what oil goes in your box and change it. You might as well. Uh, right, so what we're going to do first is I'm going to get the drainer and I'm going to undo this and I'm just going to drain the oil out so it saves me going everywhere. And what I'm going to use for this is just a simple oil drainer. So, nothing fancy. Now, you'll see what I mean when it hits the plastic, how it just kind of goes everywhere. It's a bit of a stupid design if you ask me. So I'm just going to let that completely drain off. Once it's done that, put this back. It's important to put the bolt back as soon as you can, because otherwise you'll forget about it. And once you put it back, actually tighten it, because then you, then you know it's done. All right, so as soon as this is finished draining, I'm going to put this back on. We'll turn the camera back on and we'll uh, do the next step. Right, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to disconnect the two 13mm bolts which holds the bearing on for the drive shaft. But I've just had an idea. Right, so as you can see, the bottom bolt is here and the top bolt is obviously at the top of it. That kind of goes without saying. So that releases the bearing. But what I'm going to do on this particular one is um, hopefully I should have enough room, but if not, it's not a big deal. I'm just going to disconnect the wishbone and I'm going to leave the bolts in the main drive shaft there. 
and disconnect the bearing and hopefully then I'll be able to pull this out enough because all I, all I need to do is pull that out of the gearbox. I'm not taking the drive shaft out, I just need to get this out of the way enough so I can put the new um, bearing, the new seal in. So hopefully by disconnecting that, disconnecting the ball joint, moving it out of the way, I shouldn't really have to disconnect everything else. If I do, all I'm going to really have to disconnect is the track rod end. But the less you have to disconnect, the better. So we're going to go for that and see what happens. Now, this is a little bracket that comes out and these are two little bolts. Now this car has got what you call equal length drive shafts on it. So basically the drive shafts are the same length. Now on some of, on some of the little cars, this is just a big long bar until it gets down to the end. Equal length drive shafts are supposedly to help with, um, supposedly to help with torque steer. Now, um, they're supposed to do, but anyway, <laughs> there you go. I don't know why this car would need it, but anyway. So, all I'm gonna do now is this, is I'm just gonna push it to the side, now it's loose. That's okay. Because all I'm hoping is, I'm gonna, this is just gonna pull out, I'm gonna undo this, and hopefully I should have enough just to get out of the gearbox. It's maybe in the gearbox two, two and a half inches. So I only need to just get out of the way and move it. The only problem I can see is the exhaust. The exhaust might be in the way for this one. Um, so I might not be able to do it, but I'm going to give it a go because you never know. That's all four times, 50 minutes. Now this is coming out good. What sometimes can happen is the bolts can twist. But it's not twisting this time, but that could also be caused as another problem. Because this bolt could be seized in there now. And if the bolt is seized in there, that's going to cause us more problems. The 13 mil, and what I'm going to try and do is just turn the bolt. And see if I can. Now, that's good. I can turn the bolt. So that means the bolt's not completely seized. But it is, it is in there. And it's in there good. So, this is now where it can cause a problem. There's a few ways of doing this. I did it on another video where I used an air tool. But what I'm gonna do on this video, because I realize not everybody has air tools, so I'm gonna show you a way where you can maybe do it without. So I'm gonna put this nut back on until it's flush with the bolt, which is important. Couple more threads. Now, it's flush with the bolt, and the reason that's important is that I'm going to hit this with a hammer now, but if I didn't make that flush with the bolt, I'll either damage the nut or I'll damage the bolt. At least now it's flush, I shouldn't do any damage. And hopefully with just a few nice little taps, as we can see, I didn't really hit that hard and it has loosened it. Now what I can do is, because I haven't damaged the threads and now it's loosened, I'm gonna screw out of it about halfway and just get the hammer again. And at this time you have to be a lot more gentle. Just little nice taps, because now you can damage the bolt, which you don't want to do. So just nice gentle taps it out a little bit more and just tap it again as we can see it's getting easier all the time now as we can see I haven't damaged the bolt I haven't damaged the nut it'll screw back on so there we go now it's a good thing to clean that with the wire brush so we're going to do that before we put it back give that a really good clean with the wire brush now what we need to do is take the ball joint out of the hub. Now, again, this can be a bit of a nightmare. This is why sometimes it is easier to disconnect the two bolts that are on top of the shock. 
but you can even have problems then. So you can have problems really kind of no matter where you go, but ball joints and then bolts can be a nightmare. So it just depends on the, the type of car you've got. But what I'm going to use is this big bar here, which I've used on a few of my other videos. Um, I'm going to put it on the wishbone. I've done it. Now, so I'm going to basically hook it on the wishbone and now, if you want to stand back, I should have hoped to be able to, there we go. Now, that went out quite easy. This is a zero 2010 car, so you kind of expect it to be a bit easy. If that doesn't work, you can actually hit a hammer and hold it and hit, hit this part with the hammer. Now again, sometimes that's very difficult. If you've got another person, like I've shown in a few of my other videos, one person holds on to it and the other person hits it with the hammer. So this tool is designed to be used on your own, but not all the time you can actually use it on your own, to be fair. But anyway, we now have the ball joint disconnected. So we should hopefully, hopefully be able to push this whole thing out. Just get that out of there first. All I'm going to do is get the lever bar and just gently lever this out so it's going to make it easier for me to push out. Now that's loose. So now hopefully I can get this. Now, I just, oh, I just did that with my hand. <laughs> that was really, as you can see, loose. So hopefully if I push out this at the same time. Yeah, there we go. Now, all I did is I pushed this out with my hand, I grabbed the bar and I just went like that. I just pushed it out. And as we can see, what we, will, what we are actually left with, if you come back under here now again, we are left with the actual hole now. Nothing's in our way, we can change that. And we didn't have to disconnect as much as I thought we were gonna have to disconnect. Some cars you can't do this with. Some cars you can, it just depends. We got, we got away with this car, but you know, no, no, not necessarily get away with all the cars. Now, this is, this can be, now what we have to be careful of is, obviously we can take out the old one without damaging it, with, with damaging it, that's not a problem. But you have to be careful to put this one without damaging it. As you can see, in that you've got little springs and all sorts, very easily damaged. And obviously you don't want to make, you want to make sure none of this leading edge gets damaged. Because if it gets damaged there or in here, it will leak. Now, I can't find a little tool I've got because ever since I've put the van in to do the Cosworth rebuild on it, um, it's kind of blocking all my tools and I just can't find it the back there somewhere. But not to worry, it's not really a big deal. All you, need, all you really need is something with kind of an angle on. Now, like I said, it doesn't matter how you get this out as long as you get this out. Now, you obviously don't want to damage the gearbox, but you can damage the seal. So basically, if you come around here, all I'm going to do is because I've got this little angle with it. I'm just going to push it in here and literally lever it out. So you'll see it can be quite tough. I might get a bigger bar. But I've just got a slightly bigger bar to give me a bit more leverage. Now that was a little spring I was telling you about that's in the other one. Obviously this one doesn't really matter, but you want to make sure you don't. See how that's got damage? If that's like that, when you put the new one in, it's going to leak. Now, as you can see, oh, okay. with one quick lever, we've got this out. We've damaged it, but it doesn't matter. To try and get these out without damaging it, even with the right tool, it still damages them. It's very, very difficult. But like I said, we're not bothered. All we're bothered about, this is no damage in this. So that's what you want to make sure. I want to give this a good clean, get a rag, make sure there's no bits of crap on it. So if you look at my finger, just the bits of crap that I've got there, that's not going to help us. So it's going to get a rag in here, give it a good wipe. Now ready to put the new one in, which is great fun. Now, there can be a nightmare to put in these. You have to make sure when you're putting it in, it's going in dead level. It's not going at an angle like that. If it's going at an angle like that, you'll damage the top. It's not going at an angle like that. It has to be dead straight. Also, don't put a socket on it. 
thinking, oh, I put, I put a sock, because all this here is rubber. You've only got the, the top bit, the really top edge, which is kind of metal, but you will damage it. You need to make sure you get it the right way. The little spring side, that goes inside the gearbox, and this side where you can see more kind of plastic, that goes on the outside. So the base, the one with the gap oh, goes on the inside, one with no gap goes on the outside. Now, I've moved the drive shaft out of the way a little bit more, but the problem is the exhaust is in the way. So this is going to be quite tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in with my hand as, as straight as I can and just kind of have it rest in there. One of the ways you can kind of get these in, if the exhaust wasn't there, it'd be a hell of a lot easier. But because the exhaust there, it's just making life a little bit harder. I'm going to get an old brake pad, which is more or less the same size as the bearing is. I'm going to put it on top and I'm going to put this bar directly in the middle of it and I'm going to hit the bar, not hard. That's the wrong size bar, I need to get the other one. So all I'm doing is putting this in, putting the bar on top, I'm going to hit, the, hit this extension bar and it should hopefully just push it in all in one kind of way, nice and evenly. And it should hopefully go in. Now, it's always good just to kind of take it out and check it. That does appear to be going in, which is good. Put it back and just take your time with this. And you'll uh, get it in, but it's most important you don't hit the hammer hard. You will do damage if you try and hit it hard. Now we're going in, about halfway there, let's say. Tapping it, don't go too hard, but as long as you get it nice and flat, it will go in easy, even, shall I say. I'm not smacking it with the hammer because you don't need to. And because I'm using like a flat bit of metal, you know, you're going to hit all the areas, so you're not going to do any damage. Now, I think that is looking. Two more for the look. Now, that should be in, hopefully. Um, so just an old brake pad and uh, medium size extension from my ratchet. So if you come under here, we'll have a look. Right, as we can see we're in, so that's a good sign. What you want to look for now is make sure there's no damage, make sure none of this is misshapen, make sure it's in flush all the way around, it's not sticking out one end, so it's in flush all the way around, there's no damage there, so that is good. So what we need to do now is get the drive shaft back in. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold this end out, hold the drive shaft, you're not going to be able to see but you're going to see what I'm doing, and then just literally push the drive shaft back in place. Be careful not to hit the bearing as you go in. And now, I'm not in all the way, but if you come back under, you'll see we've got to get this bearing inside this cup here. So as you can see, we're not fully in, but we're, we're resting on it. And then that will allow that to go in. Another good thing to do is just give this a good wipe so you're not putting any crap inside the gearbox. So all I'm going to do is put my rag on it, spin the wheel, just to wipe it. Now, and now it's just a case of wiggling this in till it goes in all the way. As we can see, we're about halfway in there now. This can be a bit annoying to do this, but we need to just keep wiggling that in until we get it in fully. And uh, then, what thing you will have to do is what's stopping me now is this um, wishbone, as you can see. So I'm going to have to move this, get that wishbone out of my way. That will allow me to push this in there. There we go. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but that just pushed straight in because the wishbone wasn't stopping me. So if you look in here, we have a bearing in the middle there, 
and we have our drive shaft fully in the seal. So, it's just a case now of putting everything back. Now the ball joint can be annoying because you need to line it up, get it nice and straight before it goes in. It can either just go in straight away or it can be an absolute nightmare. But again, our good friend the hammer. What you have to make sure. Now we've cleaned the bolt and I put a bit of WD on it. Now what's important is when you're hitting up the ball joint is to make there's a little groove cut into the ball joint. You don't want to hit it up too far, otherwise this bolt won't hit the groove and it won't go in. So you can see once you're doing it, you'll see the little groove lining up. So this bolt should now go in very easy, as we can see. Just just so easy. I hardly even hit that. So we know the little groove's lined up. I'm just going to put this bolt on there for the minute just so we can't lose it or anything like that. Now, so what we want to do now is tighten up the little bracket we had. I'm going to put back on the bearing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten these two 13 mil bolts, tighten this 15 mil bolt, then we'll turn the camera back on and then we'll do the rest. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this bolt on camera and the reason why I'm going to do that is so no one can say, oh well no, look, you'll damage the bolt if you hit it, you do this. If you do it right, you won't damage it. End of story. So all them people there sitting on your armchairs reading books, telling you not how to do it, you don't have a clue, because there's a lot of them out there, and then they comment on people's videos. This is just for them, okay? So as you can see, the bolt's not even halfway on. I've got a spanner here, 15 mil. See, this just goes in nice and easy. Haven't damaged anything. As we can see now, the threads are sticking out, so if I had anything damaged, I would be struggling by now. Now, there we go. So, you do it right, you don't damage it. The End answer. off. Now, once you've got it in, the good thing to do is just spin the wheel. Just make sure it's spinning okay, it's not getting stuck. Spin the other wheel. Just make sure everything's kind of spinning, it's not getting stuck. Right, what we need to do now is we need to fill it. So after you've actually checked that it's spinning, a good thing to do is clean this. As you can see, I've completely cleaned this area. So if it does start leaking, we know we've got another problem and you know we know it's not old oil we're not trying to guess once you've done that we need to obviously fill it i've got an eight mil spanner here and this is the filler i've loosened it already so just take it off this is the filler for the gearbox now i don't know exactly how much goes in i could check it out on my computer but there's no real point because all i'm going to do is i'm going to set up my little pumping machine and um, basically keep stopping as soon as it starts pouring out you know you've got it filled the little machine i've got now the little pump this is the little machine i've got you can buy these online they are quite expensive but i got this from lidl's or audi i can't remember one of the two and it was like i think 25 euros i mean it was so cheap and to be fair it's absolutely brilliant because i would normally um, use a hand pump for this which is just well it's, it's harder this is so simple to use and very very cheap so we're going to use this to pump the oil in and uh, put the cap back on and then we're, we're done. Simple. Right, so the little setup I'm using, as you can see, I've got the oil on the floor, which is 7590, semi -syn sorry, 7590 semi-synthetic gear oil. Then we have the pipe running up to our pump and then the pipe coming out of the pump goes to our gearbox. Now you have to make sure you get it the right way. This gearbox has little uh, flow direction, so if you get it the wrong way, obviously it's not going to work. Then I have a 12 volt battery, because obviously it's 12 volts. And all I've got to do now is turn it on and let it pump. You can see it's coming from the bottom. As soon as it hits the pump, it goes quite fast.
So I know I haven't got enough in yet, but just turn it off, pull out the pipe, make sure it's not coming back through. Once, once it starts leaking back out, you know you've got enough in there. So that's all I'm going to keep doing until it's basically full. Now it's important you don't want to overfill your earbox. So if you do, you just you let it come out the hole at the top until it basically stops and you can put the screw in. So if you overfill it, you can cause an awful lot of problems. Now the thing with these pumps is, even the really expensive ones, which I think are more or less exactly the same anyway, but you don't want to let them run and get hot. This is still cold. I think, you can, I think they start getting hot after about five minutes or so. So I would, if it starts getting warm or hot, just let it cool down because your pump will basically last forever. As such, there's not really a lot that can go wrong in them, really. So I just want to double check that. Still not enough. The only thing these pumps don't like pumping is water, they seize. Now they don't seize into the point where you can't use it. There's little, um, little pieces of metal that slide up and, and they seize. You can very easily unfree it. But any, as long as it's like washing up liquid or antifreeze, anything kind of additive in it, it will pump, just not water. And it seems like we're putting a lot in, but we're not. We're only about one and a half meters ish. It's just starting to drip out, so we know we're literally right on the limit. Oh, that's what we didn't want to happen. The worst part about this, it all drain back. So all I'm going to do now is put the uh, cap back on. If it's gushing out there, just let it gush out, and uh, you don't want to overfill your gearbox. So an eight mil to put that back there. What I'm going to do is just screw that back. And before I put the wheel on, I want to start it. Let the wheel spin, the one that we repaired. So I want, I want this drive shaft to spin. Let the gearbox oil circulate to see if there's any leaks coming out of there again. Because it's a possibility that it wasn't the actual seal. Um, it could have been maybe the gearbox side is damaged, so where the seal sits onto the gearbox, that might not be 100% round. Now if that's the case, we're in trouble, because obviously that's a new gearbox. So hopefully, it's just the cheaper option of the seal. That is tight. Again, before I put the cover back and clip it in, I want to make sure there's no leaks. So I need to wipe all the oil that is actually leaked out from us filling it. Get everything clean. Great. So it's WD on there just to kind of rinse everything up. Nice and clean. Now obviously what I'm about to show you is a lot easier with a lift.
but if you haven't got a lift and you do it on the floor, well then you just take it for a drive. It's the same thing, it's just a bit harder because you have to jack it back up. But basically this has been running now for about five minutes and as you can see, the passenger's wheel is spinning very fast. Now I'm going to stop the passenger wheel from spinning and make the driver's wheel spin. But you have to be careful now when you do this. If you do this and your car has a dip in it, it's not going to like it. And if it's a really strong dip, you're not going to be able to do it. So, I can do it on this one, you just have to be careful on your car. All I'm going to do with my arm, just slightly stop the wheel, hold it. This one is spinning. I've been doing this for about five minutes now. Checking under here, so if you come under here. You see this one is spinning and there is no sign of any leaks. There's no sign of any leaks here too. There you go, back. Now I realise that's only for a few minutes and what you really need to do is drive the car for a couple of days and double check. Because obviously this couple of minutes won't really tell you. It just tells you if it's leaking now, that quickly, we're going to have a serious problem. But we don't. So we are going to have to keep an eye on this over the next few days. But look, that's it. It's as simple as that. All I've got to do is put the, the plastic shield back on and the wheel. That's it. So I'm going to call it for this video. So look, hope it helps. Thumbs up and subscribe. And don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.